what's going on guys welcome to the channel today we're going to talk about catfishing we're going to talk about practicing how to cast your bait caster and uh, all the setup you need to do to have to go catfishing today we're doing we're fishing with uh, Abba Garcia 6500 C4 on an ugly stick seven foot medium action this is a pretty basic setup for catfishing uh, the reel's a little bit overkill for the catfishing that I like to do, but uh, it's a super reel, guys. Super reel. I would highly recommend any Abu Garcia reel. Fantastic reels. The ugly sticks are damn near indestructible. Uh, you know, I've had some of these for seven to ten years. They're still good. The eyelets have just lost their plastic eyes out of them. But other than that, they're still good reels. Just put new eyes in them and they're all good. I don't have a lot of room here in my backyard to practice my bait casting. But, uh, you know, I recommend just throwing it wherever you get the chance. Because uh, throwing a bait caster is a lot different than an open face. You have to set your drags and your your real drag and your your other drag. So you know what I like to do is just use other properties and practice my casting. Might have got hung up in a tree there. Most definitely got hung up in a tree there. And this is something that you'll catch in the lake quite a bit is stick fish. Very common predator in the lakes. So with the practice, you learn where to throw, you learn where your stuff's gonna go. You're gonna get snagged up out there sometimes and that's why the practice helps. To get your aim right and to get your lures to go where you want them to go. So, you know, most of the time I throw over the neighbor's fence there. He, he doesn't mind too much. I'm just throwing lead weights over. Pop that up over the fence. It really helps to practice. Even though you think you know what you're doing, just go ahead in the backyard and throw a couple of casts. Mind not tossing that over here. You mind your own business, Tom. guy to mess around with. That guy is freaking crazy. Oh, so we're going to go to a lake. See how that turns out. Hopefully there's no mean people out there to run me off with freaking shotguns. That's ridiculous. A little bit windy out here on the point, so I really hope the volume comes in all right. 
like to say is with the bank cast, it's really important that you set your drag on these. This one here I know I have set up last year. So I'm just going to go ahead and get it ready and throw it out. But these uh, real drag adjusters to do it uh, allows how much tension this allows for this to unreal itself. So you need to have that set at just the right, right tension so that you don't get any backlash and your line goes out as far as you want. Again, uh, it's an Apple Garcia 6500 C4. Next one, Rod Grill. I hope this is coming in. This will be my first cast for the year. Two of my favorite baits are shad sides and the sunny's super sticky. One thing really important when baiting up your shad sides is their scales. I like to double hook mine. I like to come up underneath of the scales in the medius portion of it. and then turn it over and grab as much as you can and bring it back through. You can see these scales starting to stick onto the top of that hook. It is so important to get those off. Let me see if I can put one on the tip for you. I don't know if you can see that, but it's poking that scale. And you can see how much it's pushing on my skin. You will not set a fish if you have any scales on the tip of that. So let the, let's get this one out in the water. So here's another one. It's a still an Abu Garcia 6500C3. You can see this knob right here. This is called your spool drag. And this star drag right here is your real drag. What the spool drag does, when you release it, that tells it how much tension to put on this reel. You can tighten this up to where it doesn't want to come out at all, or you can loosen it all the way up to where it, it wants to come out super fast. So how you adjust this is pretty simple. my lure is coming in. What you want to do is release your drag, keep your thumb on the spool, and start adjusting your spool drag until it starts to come down and tighten it up just a little bit. The point of this is to, when it's all the way up here, you want to release your reel and have just enough tension for that to fall down and stop and not get any backlash. And that's the perfect amount of tension that you need on your spool drag. What I have on here is a punch bait and I'm gonna throw it in some sunny super sticky, throw it out and I guarantee you that'll be my first fish. Just in case you wanna know or wanna buy, I can promise you this is the best punch bait that you can ever buy. Let that be a testimony on how good these ugly sticks are. I did that knowing that this would not break. Like I say, these eyelets, these eyelets have already been bent. I didn't mind dragging that through the door. 
but I completely shut that door on this and this thing did not break. I mean, it's, it is stout. I have full faith in these things. Pull in monsters with these and they are not gonna break. Other than the eyelids. But one heck of a good rod. All right, sorry about the wind, but let's see what's in the bag. Here I have my shoulder strap, spider wire. Four compartment with a sunglass case. I always keep my needle nose pliers out here out front, most handy. I don't have anything in this pocket. My smaller pocket. I of course have my fillet knife. I don't even know who makes it, but this is, I've had this for probably about 15 years. I just keep it sharp and it, it really stands by me. After every fish, I give it a quick, quick rasp through the sharpener. I keep some small black zip ties for the lights that go on into my pole. I have a lip grabber, plus it has a weight scale on it. That's really handy, because a lot of times I think I'm pulling in a 20 pounder and it's just five, so I can't lie anymore. Another pair of automatic, these are locking jaws. A little rusty right now, but these are some more handy pliers they have. And of course, a good pair of catfish skinners. Do not skimp on your skinners. You'll get these tips and they'll, you want them to be just pinching, pinching, pinching. If you get cheap ones, they'll bend, they'll overlap, and then you won't be able to grab onto the skin. Do not, do not skimp on these. this bag I have my my line I usually never use that because I usually clean as I go I have a, a tackle box in here just to keep it shape a little bit there's nothing in it but this I could just take this fishing and this is all that I need I have it in a waterproof Plano case I have my circle hooks, my dip bait hooks, I have some swivel stops, some bump stops, I don't know what they're called, and then I uh, have size 7 barrel swivels. And like I say, I could just go fishing with this case alone. Over here in the back case, I keep my bug repellent. I also put my bait back here. Of course, I don't have any sunglasses in here. But I really love this spider wire bag. Let me show you how comfortable it is, what you can do with it. You can keep this on the front of you while you're fishing. And if you ever need to do anything, you know, you're out, you're catching a fish, and if something comes up and you need your pliers, you got them right there. And this isn't a hindrance on, on the way your body moves or anything. You can, you can fully cast and, you know, this thing isn't an interruption in any way. I really like this bag because I have to walk into most places I go fish. I don't have a boat. So I really like this over a standard tackle box.
there was one out there nibbling on my bait. Sometimes those catfish will just take this thing, stick it in their mouth, and start sucking on it. <laughs> no, really, that's what they do. And uh, if you're fishing on the rocks, or if they're out there, they just got it in their mouth tasting it. <laughs> the best thing to do is pretend like you're setting on the hook, or setting the hook. That'll do two things. It'll pick your weight up off the bottom. That way you're not dragging your your sinker across the bottom and you will get snagged up doing that. So if you pretend like you're setting the hook, it'll pick that weight up off the bottom and then you reel it in fast and you never get snagged up. Another reason to do it is if they do have it in their mouth and you don't know it, and you sometimes you don't know it, and you pretend like you set the hook, you'll get him. Even though you don't know he's there, you think he's gone, you set the hook and you'll get one. So what I did there, I didn't just miss a fish. That's just how I reel my line in when I'm fishing on rocks and with dip bait. intention on catching a release today. This guy will open his mouth and show you. Unfortunately, I'm gonna have to have catfish for dinner tonight. Smack me, baby! Smack me, baby! That is the girl. All right, sorry. All right, let's go learn how to feed a catfish. Like I say, unfortunately, this guy swallowed the hook, so he's gonna die. I just well as take him home and eat him myself. Uh, you need to kill these things before you skin them. A short little story. I used to skin, I can skin these pretty quick and clean them out, but I was doing that on the river one day, I took this guy's skin completely off, just completely, completely off. All he had was tail and all of his meat. He jumped out of my hand and swam away. That's the last time that I ever want to skin a uh, live fish. So what you want to do is just conk them right here in the head. Oh, that's nasty. Next thing you want to do is there's a bone right here. You just want to go behind that bone and just cut the skin. Come straight up to his head. And same on the other side. Just cut right behind the bone. Say just cut his skin, and then on the under underside, the 
to see how it is, there's a V right here. You want to take that same point that you started with. Come straight up to that V. You want to do the same thing on the other side. Like I say, just the skin. Then on his back, want to cut around this top fin. If you don't cut around that top fin, you're going to have a really hard time taking all the skin off. So like I said, when you, it's really important that you have good skinners. You just want to grab a corner and get it started. And then the rest of it is pretty simple. Find a little bitty piece to grab onto. I didn't cut deep enough over here. Just find a piece to grab onto. Pull straight back. Just peeled her pajamas right off. Next, you want to take your knife and go right behind this fin again. Cut right up to their backbone. On both sides. Smaller fish are easier to do. Bigger fish, you're actually going to have to get into the bone. But now that that's cut all the way up to the bone on his neck, it's a simple twist and pull. And you got his head. This guy's been eating a lot of grass. So he's got a pretty firm intestine. I'd rather get that all out at once. skinned it. But here we are, perfectly good, I don't know, pound and a half catfish. Perfect size for the skillet. This is going to make for a good lunch. Definitely not dinner, but I'm not going to starve. Something I want to show you about line management. A lot of your better rods will have a, a hook, hook right here. But if it doesn't have this, you can simply use your eyelet here. Just uh, put your hook right through that eyelet. For being as I have one of these, I'm going to use it. If I can find the hole. Then what you want to do is reel, reel your line all the way tight. Grab your line somewhere in the middle of the pole and 
just start twisting. And once you get to the, once it winds up pretty far and you feel like you're just about done, go ahead and wrap it over the last eye. And now you have line that's not gonna go anywhere. Anyway, I think one fish is good enough for today. It's awfully windy out here. I don't really like fishing with this much wind. You can't tell what's a bite or what's the wind. So I'm gonna go home and enjoy a fish. You guys have a good day. Thanks for stopping by the channel. Like, comment, subscribe. I'm out. How to catfish. You tell, uh, you, what to use to catfish. This is gonna take a while. You know, not as if it's not only good just to pull dead branches, but it really helps get your practice in. Gosh darn it. No, it's not just a good idea to throw. You know, it's not just a good idea to throw some. Why am I throwing it? You know, it's a good idea just to practice so that you can get your aim right and get this to go where you want. You know, that hooks up one more freaking time.